When any wheel rolls across a surface, the mass that's pressing down on it will cause it to deform. The larger that deformation, like in the case of a semi-flat tire, the greater the rolling resistance. As the wheel deforms, energy is lost, and I can tell you, it makes it much harder to cycle a bike. On a train, the deformation in the hard steel wheels and on the rail is incredibly minor, which equates to a tiny amount of rolling resistance. But when it comes to stopping and starting, steel on steel presents some real problems. Let me show you what I mean using these two steel weights and this steel plate. Now, the only difference between these two bits of steel is that there's a bit of rubber on the underside of this one. And watch what happens when I tip the plate. Of course, the one without the rubber beneath it slips to the bottom quickly. Luckily, under normal conditions, there is just about enough grip between the wheels and the track to allow the trains to start with ease and, more importantly, to stop safely. But when there are leaves on the line, it's a different matter. You see, leaves are made up of about 80% water, and the rest is a complex combination of other substances, including cellulose, pectin, and a type of fatty acid, which happen to have lubricating properties. Research has shown that soggy, slippy leaves are actually sucked onto the track by the passing trains. And once on the track, they're crushed to a pulp by the wheels. The result is a thin black layer of crushed leaf matter, about 25 microns in thickness. That's thinner than the width of a human hair. And when you get a little bit of rain, this layer becomes incredibly slippery. This means that at peak times in the autumn, to avoid slipping, trains have to accelerate and decelerate much more slowly than normal, resulting in frustrating delays. So what does leaves on the line mean in terms of stopping distances? When Nick and Ian slammed on the brakes at the stop flag over there, this is where they came to a stop, and it's roughly where they would end up under normal conditions. But what would happen if there were crushed leaves on the rails? We're simulating the slippery effect of leaves by using a mix of washing up liquid and water. This stuff is actually less slippery than crushed wet leaves, but it's easier to apply, which is why the rail companies use this when they're training drivers to handle low adhesion conditions. Right, let's see what happens now when the train tries to stop. All right, lads. Here we go, they're about to slam on the brakes at the stop flag. is pretty incredible. Three times the distance it stopped originally. Our test is limited to a train speed of 16 kilometers per hour, and we only prepared 18 meters of line. Imagine what the effect would be on a 200 ton express traveling at 160 kilometers per hour. And this is ultimately why leaves on the track is no joke. <laughs> 